Welcome to our podcast. My name is Michelle Chifamba. In today's discussion, we shall be talking about the impact of climate change in local communities. And to help us in this discussion, we've got Tafat Okorotsky and Isaiah Mabaso. Good day, my name is Isaiah Mabaso. I'm a climate change specialist, a food uh, system scientist, um, and I'm an independent specialist in the climate uh, change sector. Thank you. Uh, greetings to you all. My name is Tafaz Okorotu. I am a climate activist and humanitarian based in Hawaii. I am also the team leader for MR Climate Hub, the internet organization that seeks to empower young people as well as finding sustainable solutions to climate change through innovation and technology. So, as a first question, it, maybe you can just explain to us why climate change is important to you and what also sparked your interest in climate change. Thank you so much. I, I think the critical concerns, um, first of all, is to find solution in addressing or avert or to minimize the impact of climate change. Um, we have three types of um, um, disasters that can uh, okay when we have avoidable um, um, risks and we have unavoidable and so we need to disseminate the information on how to adapt and how to mitigate on those avoidable the ones that we can avoid um, so the critical concerns um, there should be an incentive and the knowledge base so that we can educate the youths, uh, the elderly and those who are the victims of, of, of climate change in different areas which are impacted by different uh, disasters. For example, um, the issue to do with the cyclone Idai, they were supposed, uh, the solution was there uh, to displace the people uh, from those areas. Um, and the, right now, I think we should, um, um, the government should be involved in, in, in providing solutions maybe to, to relocate some of the people who are in vulnerable areas. Like, uh, for example, we have the people who are so vulnerable in, um, in Mzaraba and they, I think those are some of the issues and the concerns that are supposed to be addressed so that we can minimize the loss and damage if we happen to have an extreme weather event like a flood or a drought. Thank you. Um, with some of the concerns, I would say um, that needs to be highlighted are uh, the issues to do with climate finance and resources. I mean, young people do have a lot of initiatives, a lot of ideas um, to bring about solutions to the crisis. And we need to ensure that these young people, their, their resources, um, their initiatives are invested in. And also the issue to do with information dissemination. Um, they need to bridge that gap to break down the climate change discourse because the climate change issue is a broad and really complex um, issue. And if we are able to break down in simpler terms for any young person to, to be able to pass it down to the next person, especially those in the local communities, in the rural communities where the climate change issue is complex to them and it's also not in their language. So if we are to break down this information into the simplest term for any young person to be able to know and to, for them to be able to also to influence change in their communities as well. So if we are to dig deeper into the issues of climate change, what are some of the critical concerns that you think uh, is the youth uh, they're supposed to be addressed in terms of uh, uh, the climate change debate? Uh, there's the issue that uh, there's lack of access to information when it comes to the issues of climate change. So what uh, do you think um, are the critical concerns in terms of addressing the climate uh, debate? Thank you so much. I, I think the critical concerns, um, first of all, is to find solution in addressing or avert or to minimize the impact of climate change. Um, we have three types of um, um, disasters that can uh, occur when we have avoidable um, 
um, risks and we have unavoidable and so we need to disseminate the information on how to adapt and how to mitigate on those avoidable, the ones that we can avoid. Um, so the critical concerns, um, there should be the incentive and the knowledge base so that we can educate the youths, uh, the elderly and those who are the victims of, of, of climate change in different areas which are impacted by different uh, disasters. For example, um, the issue to do with the cyclone Idai, they were supposed, uh, the solution was there uh, to displace the people uh, from those areas. Um, and the, right now, I think we should, uh, um, the government should be involved in, in, in providing solutions maybe to to relocate some of the people who are in vulnerable areas, like uh, for example, we have the um, people who are so vulnerable in um, in Mzarabani. They, I think, those are some of the issues and the concerns that are supposed to be addressed so that we can minimize the loss and damage if we happen to have an extreme weather event like a flood or a drought. Thank you. The issues to do with climate finance and resources. I mean, young people do have a lot of initiatives, a lot of ideas um, to bring about solutions to the crisis. And we need to ensure that these young people, their, their resources, um, their initiatives are invested in. And also the issue to do with information dissemination. Um, there need to bridge that gap to break down the climate change discourse because the climate change issue is a broad and very complex um, issue. And if we're able to break down in simpler terms for any young person to, to be able to pass it down to the next person, especially those in the local communities, the rural communities where the climate change issue, it's complex to them and it's also not in their language. So if we are to break down this information into the simplest term for any young person to be able to know and to, to, for them to be able to also to influence change in their communities as well. So my next question is uh, on the issue of um, within the context of this of Zimbabwe or the African context, because when I was when I was reading around the issues to do with climate change, the the, the, the problems that Zimbabweans are facing as the same problem that the African the Africa or the whole of Africa is facing. So what are some of the pressing issues that you think? need government intervention and civil society intervention in addressing the issues to do with climate change? I think the government and the civil society should um, address the issue of information asymmetries uh, in terms of um, information dissemination so that um, everyone would understand we should have a, a clear definition of what is climate change and what needs to be addressed. Uh, so there should be some surveys that should be carried out first so that um, if we have the surveys and we hear uh, from the locals what are they seeing changing, what is the indigenous knowledge do they have. So it should be co incorporated um, so that we can we can address what are the real changes in terms of um, their productive, in terms of their yields, in terms of uh, temperatures, in terms of um, the diseases that are being found in the livestock. If we manage to accomplish that, um, the civil society and the government, then we would implement the solutions accordingly. I Thank think you. on the context of Africans and in Zimbabwe would be the issue of drought. Um, the beginning of this this year, twenty twenty four, most presidents declared um, to have a national disaster, which was the El Nino, which is happening in different countries, Malawi, Mozambique, South Africa. And I think it's 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 a wake up call to not just start talking about drought issues when it's already but we may find solutions to it in the next five years because El Nino droughts have been happening for the longest um, talk of the, um, the drought that happened in 2015. So we need to ensure that we are ready and prepared for people to be able to 
to adapt because people cannot still live um, like this. I mean, there's hunger as we're speaking right now. Um, and so, if we are to able to address the, address these issues earlier, um, I'm sure we would have done uh, um, justice to it as young people uh, in Africa. And the issue of having collaborative um, efforts within African countries because the drought is not only happening in Zimbabwe, it's happening in other aspects of, um, of, of the continent. Um, so if there is a regional collaborative um, in terms of bringing about solutions to the issues, I'm sure we can be able to find solutions. Um, we talk of sharing resources. Uh, I also like the issue of climate finance. There is need to for circulation to find climate finance within our region for us to be able to mitigate and adapt to climate change issues. Okay, so my other question to you is, um, since uh, the youth are the, the, the leaders of tomorrow, what are some of the initiatives that uh, the youth can give out to promote or to ensure climate justice? Uh, the the youth-led initiatives that can be carried out to include um, climate justice is to improve in terms of equity and to include the disabled and to include those uh, vulnerable groups like the women and the uh, children and they should be need to incorporate any early warning systems so that people would prepare for any disaster, should prepare for any extreme weather events that may befall any particular area and those which are known to the, to the communities. So to incorporate that justice, everyone they should be a participatory approach that should be done so that everyone should be in, involved. No one is going to be left behind and no area is going to be left behind. Um, but there are the challenges in terms of um, in implementing those uh, justice, which include the literacy level in some areas. Some people might not uh, understand. So there's need to transcribe and to convert into the vernacular languages so that everyone should be included. Um, the other challenge is um, access. The roads, some areas are so remote to an extent that in terms of reaching out those areas will be difficult. So there's need to finance the teams which will be leading the youth with um, vehicles which are 4 by 4 so that they can access those areas. And um, some areas might not have network so that um, the people might communicate. So there's need to involve maybe um, since um, there's an initiative for the Starlink, maybe in some other areas in one of the growth points or a shopping area where people can access internet uh, with the Starlink since it's a satellite based uh, um, internet so that we can communicate with those remote areas. Um, and the other challenge is of um, different ideologies and the cultural backgrounds. Um, in some areas, they have their own belief, so there's need um, to talk with the headmen, the chiefs, so that uh, and the religious leaders, so that they can understand what is climate change, what are the impacts, um, so that they can be incorporated uh, through that. Thank you. I think some of the youth-led initiatives that can be done, uh, we talk of cleanup campaigns, we talk of um, police and advocacy, we talk of social media platforms, we talk of writing petitions to our government for them to take action. In the context of rural communities, I think there is need for more information to be passed on and for me, um, youth lead groups to talk about climate change because we cannot solve what we do not know. So, if we are to find more on, if we are to invest more on climate education within, within these communities, we are able to, you know, pass down the information to the next person. We are also able to find solutions because we already know what we know. And if we do not know about the climate change discourse, then we cannot be able to find any solutions. So, and also I think there is need for us to bridge the gap between the people in the local, in the rural communities and the people in the urban. Because these young people have no idea what climate change is all about. Uh, 
we talk about it, yes, here in the capital city in Harare, but the people in Matem, in Gokwe or the people in those rural communities have no basic knowledge on what climate change is, but they are the ones who are being, you know, affected by the climate change. They are the ones who are on the forefront of the climate crisis. So there's need for us to bridge that gap in terms of knowledge, in terms of you know capacitating them by capacity building trainings to ensure that they are also involved in the climate change discourse despite the barriers that they face or despite having no any resources but the little that we have can be can go a long way and can make a difference in their lives. So I just wanted to find out from you again uh, in Zimbabwe, what are some of the youth, youth-led climate change initiatives that have been put in place or technologies that have been put in place uh, by the youth uh, to, to promote uh, uh, climate justice? Uh, how best can these initiatives be turned from being an individual based to become local or regional or international to have an international impact? What are some of those, if you can think of any, uh, or that can that can be the, some of the initiatives that can be put in place by the youth to promote climate change justice? Um, in Zimbabwe, we have a lot of young people doing youth-led initiatives. Uh, but there is need for them to be amplified. We talk of how the Emerald Climate Hub is doing a biogas initiative of empowering young women in the rural communities. And there is need for collaborative between the government and these civil societies, the youth lead, the groups, to ensure that these initiatives are not only on a local level, but also expand to become a regional or international level um, through amplifying the voices of the ones who are doing these initiatives. Um, we talk of um, the Ovo uh, Africa Climate um, Action Initiative, where they're empowering um, young people and women by um, doing trainings and capacity buildings through climate education initiatives. Um, there's a lot happening in Zimbabwe when it comes to the climate change discourse. And I also think that there's need for young people to come together and collaborate because we are fighting the same issue. We are not competing against each other. We are fighting the climate crisis together as there's need for us to come together to ensure that whatever we're doing, it's being amplified on a national and also on an international level. Uh, we are seeing um, some campaigns and awareness going on. We are having uh, cleanup campaigns. Um, rivers are being rehabilitated. For example, uh, the Mkwise River has been a project that has been implemented to try and um, avoid dumping of um, of some materials into the river, um, and there is um, some rural initiatives which are being implemented that include um, the Kumbuza, um, um and some other. Uh, civil societies which are carrying out some climate smart agriculture that include um, agroecology, um, sustainable intensification, agroforestry, and organic agriculture, which is being implemented by various organizations. So there is um, some solutions which are which are being implemented, and I think we are in the right direction in terms of fighting climate change. Thank you. So, so my other question to you is, uh, as young people, what do you think needs to be done at a national, a regional and international level uh, by, 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 by leaders to promote the development, to promote sustainable development in the midst of our climate change? Uh, what are some of the policies that, that you think uh, need to be, to be put in place to ensure sustainable development in the midst of climate change? We need more action in terms of these policies. We talk about the climate change, finance, the climate change bill um, that um, the Minister of Environment has been, you know, conducting in different um, regions of the country. And there is need for inclusivity and diversity by including everyone in in these um, write-ups in terms of the climate change bill. Are young people involved? Are people in the marginalized communities involved? Um, are women? Are people with disabilities involved? So until we involve everyone, 
until we don't leave anyone behind, then we are able to address these issues because these issues affect um, people differently. They are marginalized in communities, the women, are people with disabilities, they are affected differently, but they are being left out in the climate change discourse. So we do not only want to talk about climate change to, to shout about it, but we need to take action. Um, wherever we are. Um, it only takes um, one change, it only takes you a person to to make a difference in our communities. So there is need for us to address these policies. policies. Um, there is need for the government to ensure that every, every single person is not left behind in the climate change um, discourse. Thank you so much. I, I think there is need to incorporate um, the institution that we have, which include the universities, the research stations, uh, and the civil societies, um, what are their findings and what are the results that they are in their research that they are carrying out in different parts? For so the information, the research has been already carried out. So there's need for the institution, the Ministry of Agriculture and Climate Change, and the Environment Department, and the EMA to revisit those research that has been done by various organizations and try to implement it accordingly um, with with the, the diversity from different institutions because the climate change is a broad subject that include the scientists uh, the social scientists um, so there the is need to really incorporate each and every sector that is being affected by by by, by the climate change thank you okay thank you so much for your uh, for your enlightening uh, submissions as a last question i just wanted to find out uh, from you what are the advice that you can give uh, to those youth who um, might be interested in taking part in the climate change discourse Thank you so much. Um, the suggestion that I'm giving is for climate change, um, like there was an initiative that we now have um, agriculture as a subject in the primary, which wasn't uh, there before. So I think that, that climate change discourse uh, or the climate change issues should be incorporated in the curriculum so that um, the youths, we catch them young, we teach them ab about the climate change issues, their impacts, their consequences, um, what are the issues that they are causing, which include poverty, which include food insecurity, which include, so that they can have a clear picture of what's happening, so that they can preach that same gospel of climate change to, the, to their parents, so that they can understand. Sometimes, um, if it's coming from the youth, especially the young people, you say, Mama, we learned about this. So people, they pay attention to kids and sometimes those who are not aware of, of the changes, they might learn so that we can have a holistic approach in terms of uh, tackling these climate change issues. It shouldn't be something that we do um, but we, we should have a united front in terms of fighting these climate change issues. As a country, I think each and every sector, um, most, the most affected area of, um, by the climate change is the energy sector and um, a full, which is agricultural, forestry and the other land uses. So we should have an approach, those departments or those ministries, they should collaborate with the civil societies and our institutions, as I have mentioned earlier, that they should come up with the solutions and the innovative hub in terms of fighting climate change. Thank you. Um, my advice that I would give to young people is that um, you are not alone and get involved in the climate justice um, discourse. Um, use what you have to make a difference. Um, we talk of just the basic, the social media that we are always on. Um, take part, join a group, um, join a youth led initiative. Um, it only takes one retweet to make a difference. Go on Twitter, talk about it. Um, circulate information about what climate change is. Talk about it wherever you are. And just remember that 
you are not alone in the fight. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, for those who want to get in contact with me, I will leave my WhatsApp number, which is uh, plus two seven six three three zero eight zero seven two so that uh, we can clarify some of the issues and those who want help with the consultants thank you so much uh thank you very much for having me uh, make sure to follow us on our social media handles uh, twitter linkedin facebook instagram at emerald climate hub thank you thank you so much for joining us in this week's podcast in the podcast, we're discussing the issues that are affecting youth in terms of uh, addressing the challenges to do with climate change. And we had a very enlightening discussions, discussion with our guests. So with that, we say goodbye. <laughs>